so let's take a deep dive into OpenAI's Sora, check out how it works, discuss the chance of it using Unreal Engine, and the way it's gonna change the movie industry forever. So what is Sora? It's an AI model that can create realistic and imaginative scenes from text instructions, or in more technical terms, it's a text-to-video diffusion model. OpenAI, along with the impressive videos we've looked at, has also released a research paper where it more or less explained the pipeline. First. Sora takes a video and squishes it down into what's called a latent space. Latent space is a bit like a magic compression tool. It takes something complex and reduces it to its essence. For Sora, this means taking a video with all its visual and temporal complexity and condensing it into a simpler, more manageable form. This doesn't mean it's making the video shorter or lower quality. Rather, it's distilling the video into a form that's easier for the program to work with. After this compression, Sora gets gets a ton of patches. Each patch captures a part of an image or a moment in the video, like a bit here, a bit here, and so on. This approach isn't entirely new. It's been used before to help machines get better at recognizing and understanding images, but Sora takes it to another level by applying it to videos, which are inherently more complex because they add the dimension of time. The same patches have to somehow stay relatively consistent throughout the video. Once Sora has compressed the video into this latent space, and broken it down into patches, it starts to learn in process. But all this is happening behind the scenes, so to speak. From our point of view, it's doing magic. So how does it do it? After the training is done, Sora combines the patches into some low-res blurry visions. I'd call this shapes, because you literally can see nothing but a bunch of gibberish at this stage. Consistent gibberish. When Sora creates something new, it's not just randomly sticking patches together. It's using what it learned during training to arrange these patches in a way that makes sense, based on the patterns and rules it observed. By adjusting how these patches are arranged, Sora can create videos of different lengths, resolutions, and aspects ratios. After these blurry and noisy visions are generated, the AI switches to cleaning up the noise. Basically, with each step, it predicts what a clear version should look like. This is an iterative process. The system uses transformers, which are kind of like small models geared to work with sequences. Step after step, the system clears up the patches while keeping everything consistent. It does it many, many times in a row. Take a look at this video of a puppy. The base image with patches doesn't really look like anything specific, but after four steps of computing and clearing up the noise, the dog looks much better and more consistent. If we put two videos side by side, we would see how similar they look in the way they are staged and framed. Then after the 30 second round of computing, the video looks like this, super clean, consistent, and pretty much photorealistic. I can still see artifacts and unrealistic motion, but that's something that's going to get better over time. What I think is the most impressive about Sora is this consistency. We all remember that video of Will Smith, it inspired spaghetti was blurry, messy, inconsistent, and in every way quite terrible. Impressive for that time, but still terrible. Sora, on the other hand, juggles the elements of the video nicely and manages to keep the things in place. Even the explanation I gave you doesn't really explain how it manages to keep images consistent from one frame to the next, because if you have ever tried to generate something with Dolly or similar image generators, you know that it's really difficult to maintain the same style and layout. Just think about all that sheer number of videos that were used to train Sora. Each frame had to be individually dissected to pieces, analyzed, simplified, and stuffed into a huge library of patches. But there is one more thing that I find even more impressive than that. The physical interactions and physics-based lighting in these videos. How can AI so accurately and consistently calculate the lighting and, for example, fluid of these videos? That's where people start speculating whether Sora is using the Unreal Engine. And I have found a couple of very interesting tweets from Jim Fan, research scientist and lead of AI agents at NVIDIA. Yes, that NVIDIA. And let me read you a couple interesting bits. First, he gives an explanation of what Sora is, and this way of looking at things presents an interesting perspective. Sora is a data-driven physics engine. It is a simulation of many worlds, real or fantastical. The simulator learns intricate rendering, intuitive physics, long horizon horizon reasoning and semantic grounding, all by some denoising and gradient mass. I won't be surprised if Sora is trained on lots of synthetic data using Unreal Engine 
five, it has to be. I'm not sure about the last bits because they sound a bit like uh, fear mongering, but surely Jim knows way more about this stuff than me. Then apparently some people didn't really believe that Sora was doing all that complex rendering and processing like Jim has suggested. So he had to follow up with a more traditional explanation of how Sora works. Sora is an end-to-end -end diffusion transformer model. It inputs text image and outputs video pixels directly. Sora learns the physics engine implicitly in the neural parameters by gradient descent throughout massive amounts of videos. Here he says exactly what I said a few minutes back. The Sora doesn't do any rendering similar to the Unreal. It just learns from millions of frames how directional lighting works, how fluids work, how the white foam appears when waves crash the shores and so on. And then it just uses all these bits as building blocks to compose something new out of them. Like a huge Lego set without an instruction. But where things get really interesting is where Jim starts analyzing the prompt and the output. And this is one of the most interesting analysis that I've read so far. Take a look at this video and write in the comments what you think is the most impressive about it. The prompt for this video sounds like this. Photorealistic close-up video of two pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside a cup of coffee. Now let's see what Jim has found. The simulator instantiates two exquisite 3D assets. Pirate ships with different decorations. Sora has to solve pirate ships with different decorations. Sora has to solve text to 3D implicitly in its latent space. The 3D objects are consistently animated as they sail and avoid each other's paths. Fluid dynamics of the coffee, even the foams that form around the ships. Fluid simulation is an entire subfield of computer graphics, which traditionally requires very complex algorithms and equations. Photorealism, almost like rendering with ray tracing. The simulator takes into account the small size of the cup compared to oceans and applies tilt shift photography to give a minuscule vibe. The semantics of the scene does not exist in the real world, but the engine still implements the correct physical rules that we expect. Just think about the complexity of all the processes described by Jim. Text to 3D, calculating the fluid dynamics and simulations, doing it all realistically, applying a special style and even scaling the physics. But all of these things that Jim mentioned are the steps that human creators would take if they were to create a video like this. Sora, on the other hand, did nothing like this. It didn't calculate fluid dynamics, it didn't generate 3D models of ships, it didn't compute all that physics. What it did was take a huge amount of visual data, disassemble it into individual bits and pieces, and then combine all that into one video. Most likely Sora had videos with uh, pirate ships to draw inspirations from, it had videos with ships interacting with water, videos of coffee mugs, and even all those videos styled to look like a miniature. It knew that pirate ships could not exist inside a coffee cup. That this sentence makes no sense in the real world, so it chose an artistic, imaginative approach. To me, all of these sounds even more impressive than what Jim mentioned. But is Sora really using the Unreal Engine 5 to generate these videos? Jim believes that UE5 generated pairs are added as synthetic data to the training set. And I agree with him. It's pretty much possible that the developers have pre-simulated a bunch of interactions and physics-based situations beforehand and then just fed it all to the AI to learn from it. All this to me seems like a possible revolution in filmmaking and content creation in general. I want you to think about three things. Stock videos, VFX, and amateur filmmaking. I think the release of Sora will change these three things forever. Let's take those stock videos, for example. Currently, the market is huge and every video maker can sell their footage online. I personally have had a lot of experience with that and am actively selling everything I should. But no matter how much material there is, there will always be an issue of getting something tailored to your needs. Even for my YouTube videos, it often takes a lot of time to find suitable B-rolls. When Sora gets released to the public, it will instantly kill all the stock video platforms because why would you bother looking for suitable footage when you can just generate it while keeping the same aesthetic, uh, the same lighting, characters, and so on? Why would you pay for a pricey subscription to such services if you can pay OpenAI and be at the forefront of the technology? All these stock websites would have to buy the API for Sora and offer the feature of generating footage just to stay relevant. But why would I mention VFX earlier? 
here. Well, maybe Sora will not totally replace VFX, but it will surely make things faster. Because in your average movie production, to create the VFX shot and put, for example, something in that shot, you need to do a lot of stuff, a lot of separate shootings. Then you have to do rotoscoping, composing, matching lighting, adding grain, and so on. And what's the worst part of it is that until you actually do the final render, you don't really see what the shot will look like. Companies waste millions of dollars on redoing the same shots over and over again just because some concepts sound great but don't actually look that impressive or even are possible to implement. With Sora, film studios and directors will be able to just feed some footage to the algorithm and ask it to add necessary effects like in that example of merging two videos together or they would just input a bunch of concept art and ask AI to animate everything. This will make the process of developing the visual side of the movie so much easier and the VFX department will be absolutely thrilled to get more work done in less time. But personally, I am much more excited about amateur filmmaking. Aspiring directors and creative people usually are pretty much constrained in terms of technologies available to them. Your average YouTuber with a small channel cannot possibly spend a lot of money for costly effects in their videos. And homegrown filmmakers cannot fully express their creativity, mostly because they don't have the budget to hire any animators, special effects people, and so on. With Sora, they will be able to create the movies they want, see their ideas in action, tell their stories without constantly being obligated to reduce the scope just to lower the budget. Sora truly is going to be a monumental jump in the world of filmmaking, opening new possibilities to even more talents, and I can't wait to make all my ideas come to life. Unfortunately, we don't know yet when Sora will get released to the public. It can happen in a few months or even half a year. There is no timeline provided to us. And we also don't know how it will be monetized. Maybe we'll need a separate subscription to use Sora. Maybe we'll get charged for every frame, second, or minute of the video. I can only imagine how expensive it must be to maintain the servers for something like Sora. Because, because it's much more complex than Dolly. Dolly generates one image at a time, but Sora needs to generate image after image and keep all of them consistent and similar. So I'm pretty sure that it will not be included in the existing 20 bucks subscription. And the processing times will also be quite long. Don't think that you will be able to generate a video in a few seconds as it happens with images. Let's say we want to generate a 60 second video. Dolly takes around three seconds to generate a single image. Multiply that by the minimum of 24 frames per second. And in total, just image generation should take about an hour. Even if we assume that generating each new frame takes less time since they are so similar and divide the time in half, it will still be a long time to wait. So if OpenAI somehow manages to reduce this time to crazy below five minutes, it will definitely cost a pretty penny. But if you are in video production, then you will see that the Freedom Sora gifts is worth every penny, at least for me. What I also think is very interesting to discuss is the ethical aspect of all all this video generation. When the video of Will Smith eating spaghetti got released, we weren't really scared for our identity. But now the AI generation is so good that a regular observer wouldn't notice anything. And this opens a huge potential for fake videos. Do you remember all those spy movies or movies about covert agents where the hero spends a lot of time planning an operation to gather some incriminating videos of a subject? Well, now all it will take is a single text prompt in Sora. At least I I hope that the system has some sort of a fail safe that doesn't allow generating videos with real people. I'm also curious how the system will react to a description of a person instead of a name. And the answer to this question is what really matters right now. What if someone would be able to just upload your picture to the web and then generate a ton of videos with you? Would you like that? Personally, I would like to have my identity safe. What I'm also curious about is whether OpenAI will release the source API to developers like it happened with ChatGPT, something tells me that they should keep this particular piece of technology under full control. Because as soon as the tech leaks out, there will be no way of stopping it. Without a total control over such a powerful video generation system, there is just too much risk. Maybe I'm rushing things too much, but what I know for sure is that Sora is a revolution. It's the next big thing that the world of AI was waiting for. All we have to do now is wait for it to get released, and if you want to see a video of me testing it out, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.